it's not just people who are you know the ones you might imagine they're kind of old guys often they're the really pleased to see that there are you know new people who want to be involved in the industry you know i wouldn't ask shouty baz 64372 for his views on my broadcasting so you know if he wants to offer them then <laughs> I don't want no disrespect. Cup, no text on a check. Welcome back to episode seven of Breaking Barriers, and I have a real treat for our listeners because today I'm joined by Sky Sports' very own Kate. Kate, how's it going? Hi, nice to see you, ma'am. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. I'm actually really looking forward to having this chat with you. I mean, when I was doing the research, I came across a few things that you know kind of shocked me. Um, first of all, that being oh, right. a violent. <laughs> Wow. Ah, back in the day, yeah. I was that was my thing when I was when until I was about eighteen, um, actually. And I th- I think, you know, it takes a lot of obviously commitment and hours to to learn to be half decent at the violin. So I think that was something that actually really helped me in all of my, you know, in all the things I've tried to achieve since was learning how to do that like focused work on something even when you don't want to do it you still have to do your hours and you and try and you at the improve. National Youth Theatre? I did yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah I yeah you really are I had this weird time where I was in so I was in the National Youth Orchestra on the violin and then I was also part of the National Youth Theatre um and it was just the best time because it's like you're getting to perform in all sorts of um incredible venues I mean like for in the youth orchestra we played at the proms so I just remember thinking like wow this is such a an incredible thing to be a part of like the I don't know if you've been to the Albert Hall but the the acoustic is just like the music is inside you yeah um so I used to absolutely love that and and I think actually performing to be honest is is one of the things that I felt was cool about um tv and about broadcasting and live broadcasting it's not exactly the same in terms of how it feels but it is similar you know you get prepared and then you go and um deliver whatever whatever it is you've you've prepared for and so you mentioned briefly broadcasting there so for anyone who doesn't know about you could you give us a little bit of a brief summary about exactly how you got into the business if that's possible brief summary oh my goodness sure yeah i basically well at university you know I would write match reports and and I was a, a half decent squash player that was my that was my kind of sport that I was good at and into but I used to you know just it was one of those households where I, I'm an only child so I would play with like people in the in the little area where we lived and I would just whatever game cricket quite often football a bit if I could get enough like people um and my dad would come out and hit with me and my mum as well and then occasionally we'd go down to the squash courts and I'd be like, you know, left, just get on with this on the corner, like, go, and, so i just hit up against the wall, boring, like, for hours and hours, because there was not a lot else on. Um, and uh, anyway, so that was how I kind of got into sport. And then when I was at university, I would, I would, yeah, write the old match report. Nothing too serious. I had like a, like a radio show that I would host. It's amazing the setup of stuff you can do at, at university, isn't it? Like, some of the things that are available, I, I was so lucky you know you could just swan down to the amazing recording studio that had been set up by enthusiastic students whenever you wanted so that was cool um but then after that I wanted to get a well I had to just get a job right you know you leave university it's, it's not I, I didn't think it, uh I felt as though I had relied on my parents for long enough so I wanted to get down to London um I'm from Northamptonshire originally and so I just you know, put my CV or whatever it was on on recruiting websites, and I, you know, looked around a bit for where people were advertising jobs. And one lot I saw uh, was this technology company, Autonomy, and I was like, that rings a bell. Why did that ring a bell? Um, and it was because they're the shirt sponsor of my football team, Tottenham. And I was like, okay, good reason I was happy. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I applied for this grad scheme there and they took me on and it was a pretty weird place to work. Um, but they had a box at, at Spurs 
and if you like had clients that you wanted to take down there you could <laughs> say oh I really I really need this box because I have to tell people about technology so yeah I would do that um which was awesome but basically you know I would just while I was doing that so that meant I got to London so I was close to where you know like lots of forecasters have um their headquarters and I was nearer to being able to meet people and work out how I might get into sports broadcasting and so I would just then kind of try and think of people I might know who would know someone I'd like write these spurious letters to, or emails to the Telegraph or to the Guardian or all these places um and I'd go and meet and have these like slightly embarrassing coffees where people were you could tell they're like I don't have any work but you know I'm just being nice to this young person um and this went on for a while and 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 I started to try like pitching articles I said to you I played squash and I started trying to pitch articles I, I found out that the guy who was the editor of the metro like squash so I started writing him squash articles and occasionally he would like put one in you know like once every six months um yeah and so basically I just was trying to get my words into various papers because I thought I wanted to show that I knew about sport I could write about sports and then I would use that to try and get onto to schemes and and that is how it played out I I got um, a place on uh, BBC kickoff which is mm. like a like an internship thing where you work every you know weekend for a period of time with them um, and then from that yeah I asked them if they knew of any other work I ended up doing a kind of announcer job at Wembley which was cool um, and again just picking up bits and bobs but the real breakthrough this went on again for I don't know a few, a few years the real breakthrough was when I went off and I would always look on jobs websites and I and I at the last minute I was asked to go and do little interviews at uh, uh, a women's golf event uh, the, one of the majors on the LPGA tour in Evian so it was just flew out to do that and, and I had to just do a whole load of interviews with various um, golfers in a golf cart so that was fun and out there I met a guy who worked for BN Sports which is the sports bit of Al Jazeera based out in Doha and uh, he was like oh yeah I'm about to start working for BN Sports um, you should I think they have a couple of jobs you should see if you can get one um, and I didn't really think much of it and also I had never really thought I wanted to go and work in Doha um, which is quite far away mm. for starters um, and anyway yeah again time passed and the, the guy in charge there rang me up and was like yeah let's do an interview and, and I got a job out there for two years so um, and off the back, back of that I was I was recruited to, or whatever I was whatever the term is don't want to be too grand but yeah someone asked me to come and work at Sky Yes, yeah, so it's it's been like it's been quite a journey for you, and um, I guess the important thing to kind of discuss is how opportunities for you have changed across the way. Because, like you mentioned, when you first got in, it was so it was so difficult. Do you kind of feel like it was harder for women at that stage, and things have kind of got better throughout throughout the years? It's so hard to tell, Mary, because obviously, as I've gone on, you know, I have more experience now, and I have fewer barriers again you know as you make progress in the industry you have you know more people and you, you have fewer barriers to applying for things you might want to do I definitely have had experiences more in the early days where people have said we don't want a woman's voice on this for example now that could be some sort of cat candid way of saying oh we actually we don't want you Kate um but the fact that people kind of five or six years ago thought that this was like unacceptable or maybe even less than that four or five years ago I don't know thought that, that was an acceptable way of of expressing things says quite a lot about some of the hiring processes and the kind of perspectives in the in the industry now right because <laughs> obviously lots of people are still working in 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 the industry who for whom that was completely a reasonable way of looking at things not just five years ago but you know through their whole career so you know I think you, it, it's not just people who are you know the ones you might imagine that kind of old guys often they're the really pleased to see that there are you know new people who want to be involved in the industry often they're 
there's plenty as many people who've been supportive of me who've who've tried to kind of keep the place a closed fort and and some you know even some younger people who I've worked with will instinctively think that if there's a guy and a girl on the on a shift that like oh the guy will know more about about the football when it I, I hope would almost not ever be the case <laughs> based on you know the work I've put in so yeah but sort of being at Sky as you have been for a while now you joined in 2019 was it yeah I st- kind of started the year um came back from Doha and and started that job straight away which was uh into the deep end. So, yeah it was just so exciting it was just so lovely as well to um well p- first of all of course to move back to London and to to be around all my friends again and you know I'd really missed it and and it's quite a conservative culture out in Qatar and 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 I was there on my own and you know it's a lot of families and I didn't have that so it's quite a tricky time from that perspective but then to come it, it also just felt like it wasn't at the center of of football because it's kind of out there and we were reporting on the Premier League but it was all obviously going on in, in England so then to come back um, and to you know Sky really feels like it's just the heart of the football world really in, in many ways I, you know obviously I know the level casters and they're great too but um, it just there's that excitement to it there's a lot of people who have come up through the ranks who are like incredible producers and they just you know, they, they know every anecdote from the history of, of football, it feels like. So you can just chat to them for hours of that and they tell you the little, you know, nuggets of stuff that you've heard of from several uh, d- distance, you know, from a distance. And then suddenly it's like right there in front of you and, and you just feel like you're, you know, a part of something really great. So, yeah, I was really excited to come back. Um, and the, the channel that hired me is Sky Sports News. So that's like the the rolling sports news channels so you do like two or three hours on covering whatever it was that happened to be going on during that period of time so you know the ones I really love are when they're like a Friday evening when there's maybe a Premier League game maybe there's some you know rugby league there's some tennis perhaps going on there's a golf tournament and you're just like in there with the cameras and seven screens or whatever trying to watch like all this all this sport that's going on so that you know what's happening when when they say okay oh, can you update the, the golf leaderboard <laughs> so yeah it's a it's a really fun environment to be around obviously less fun in terms of community at the moment because there's very few people in still because of coronavirus uh but but that, that the team atmosphere is still really really cool Yes, yeah, so you're kind of sort of at the crux of everything, really, and especially at Sky Sports. So what I was going to say was that it's a, you know, it's your experience there and your recognition and your role there is pretty big. But do you often kind of get people online saying things about that, especially because they do know that Sky is a big company in the home of sports? Is there sort of anything you've ever received online? Yeah, I mean, we do. Yeah, you don't want to say it's like an occupational hazard of the job, but at the moment it feels as though it is. Um, people deal with it in different ways. I, I very occasionally will like retweet something someone sent to me. Often, if if it's like a little bit ludicrous, there was one there was one guy or girl I, I can't remember who I I had to do the Christmas shift, so I was you know working on Christmas Day feeling pretty. Like, you know, everyone's got to do it sometimes, so I don't, I don't mind, but it's not the best day. And um, someone tweeted me, happy Christmas to everyone except for Kate Mason, that, insert, mm. whatever, rude words there. And um, <laughs> I was just like, so mad, like, why, why? <laughs> you want to say happy Christmas to everyone like many people don't celebrate Christmas for starters and also like I don't know you why why is this happening anyway so that's more like a sort of humorous ludicrous thing and then there are more of the like really aggressive just I don't know I think often on social media it's about people trying to take back some sort of control you know they see that people are doing a job maybe they would want this job or, or maybe they don't think about it like that and they think well, I can always 
you know, I don't, I don't value this person. I don't think she should be doing this job because it's not right that she should be doing it, you know? And so then they can say things like that in a really unpleasant way. And it does, yeah, it does hurt. Um, but, you know, there's that old thing about you should never take the criticism of people you don't, whose views you don't respect. Mm. So that's how I tend to see it. You know, I wouldn't ask Shouty Baz 64372 for his views on my broadcasting. So, you know, if he wants to offer them, then... <laughs> Yeah. On, on a more positive note, there's clearly more women coming through the broadcasting industry. I mean, you, you've, you've seen Hayley McQueen, aren't you? Just come back from a, a maternity leave. There's, there's more women coming through and you see a lot of it on, on Sky, like live coverage games and such. It's really sort of promising and exciting to see. Yeah, I love that about Sky. I mean, I think Sky, would, they, they, it seems to me as though they are the people who are making the changes ahead of time and then other people follow them. Um, you know, in terms of having a female pundit, female pundits on, in terms of having, or tr definitely trying to have more people of colour on, um, and just being conscious of that, that that's not something they're automatically doing. Um, and I think people are given more opportunities to show that they, they have knowledge, they're not written off in a way that it might have been traditionally, just by looking at them, like, you don't look as though you'd know about this, so... Um, so yeah, I love that, and I love just you know having women, other women around when I'm working because you know what it's like. Um, it's tough if you're the only woman in a, or if you're the only anything in a in a conversation. If you could be the only guy. It's you don't want to be representing the whole of your gender or your race or whatever. It's just better, and that if there's a equal-ish distribution of of every kind of characteristic, I think. And sort of moving forward, just to kind of tie up, what do you kind of feel like Sky as a company are doing to, you mentioned it briefly, push things forward and make sure that the next generation of, of, of girls and, and even guys who come through have the opportunities to, to really sort of gain roles irrespective of their gender? Mm. Well, I'm, I don't know about, you know, programmes and those sorts of things. I know you mentioned earlier when we were talking about um, the, they're trying to make sure that if they've got, if they're hiring for a job, you know, they've got a range of different types of people coming in for the interview. So they're trying to make sure that they introduce, that they interview as people from different areas and different walks of life for any jobs that are advertised. And because it's, because it's a big company, they're able to do that because, you know, they've got a really good corporate culture and they've got lots and lots of, um, you know, people involved in looking to the, into those things. And I, and I think that's probably why they've been able to focus on trying to make sure that they're doing the right thing. You know, they can say to someone, this is your job, make sure you, you know, you, you look for people that are of this background or this background. But also just in the newsroom, whenever, although sadly no work experience these days, but whenever we would get in work experience people, there'd just be a range of people, girls and boys from different backgrounds. And, and if you're giving people those opportunities, then they're going to filter through in the end. Um, and I also think that, that, yeah, you know, you know that there's other women working in these roles. So it gives you stuff that, to aspire to, um, even in quite, you know, the, the top of management is still quite as you might imagine it. But I feel as though people are working through the levels a lot more. And, and as soon as you've got more women making the decisions, I guess it just means that there's a different... I, you know, I fight against this idea that there's like a woman's perspective and a man's perspective, obviously, but I just think in terms of having all different kinds of perspectives, it's really, really important. And I don't know, um, the, the podcast I do separate to Sky, but the Football Ramble, Ramble yeah. Um, yeah, they were previously, it was four guys, you know, four kind of white middle class-ish e guys. Um, and, and that was their thing that they set up years ago. And, you know, great. It, it was wicked. I used to listen to it for years and years and years and then they saw like wouldn't it be better to just have some different perspectives on on football within the content that we're making every week and and so that's why they got me in and Jules Breach who um mainly presents with BT I think um and a couple of football writers basically uh other guys and it just I think it just from my perspective it just feels so welcoming that, that they're wanting to do that and 
and it just changed the conversation a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what we're doing here. Just, you know, even this conversation is just kind of really helping and opening up that, that idea that um, sports or maybe the industry is not inclusive, but actually what we're seeing is that it's becoming more inclusive and it's thanks to stuff like this, like podcasts and, um, and chats and stuff. So it's always uh, amazing to be a part of. And just to finish up, for what's, what is the future beckon for you, Kate? The future for me, I'm going to present all of the main football tournaments all over the world for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that is, it. that is the aim. I, I, I'm hoping to, so in the, in the short time, you know, I have, I have my work at Sky and that's, that's my contract. And I, and I work for this season, at least with the Ramble doing um, kind of one or two shows a week. And then I'm also hosting this football Ramble present what's well, there like football ramble presents book club so we do read a football book and then get the author on we've got some really good ones coming up that i'm quite excited about and it's it's such a cool thing to do because you get to just be a bit more reflective and like sit down and chat to someone you really admire about what what they've been through in their life um so yeah lots more episodes of that i hope and then yeah i just want to be as close to the to life obviously at the moment you know it's a little bit of a sad version of live football but I I just want to be as close to live football as I, as I can and, and hopefully that'll mean doing more work with Sky and, and you know ultimately I'd, I'd love to be doing the work that Kelly Cates does presenting uh, the big games or talking to people pitch side that's the kind of next next step for me hopefully. And will we be seeing all that across the social media channels? Ah of course yeah at KBL Mason don't abuse me. <laughs> no, I like the um, the ones where you like do pictures of you and the co-presenters. It's just like all oh, yeah, the and the nice. They're just cute, nice, isn't it? I feel like it's nice to just see what people are up to. I feel like a bit of a gimp sometimes because I'm obviously just going <laughs> to work and then taking a photo. Like you don't, you wouldn't do that in the school office. You wouldn't be like, hi guys, I'm in. Um, but it's nice for people to see what it's actually like and. And that we're all friends as well, which is so bloody lovely at, at Sky and at the Rumble. Um, it's just such a nice environment. I, I really feel lucky about that because, you know, it's such a... Lots of people want to work in football broadcasting and so you'd imagine people might have to, like, stab each other in the back. But um, Sky and the Rumble is just, yeah, friendly and supportive. How lucky am I? <laughs>